Good morning, friends. This is a little disclaimer this time. I break this figure twice on camera. Now, the week that I did this video, it was, I'm not sure when it's going up, but the week that I did it, um, it was the week that my newest child was born. My wife was having contractions. I was a little stressed out. There was some health concerns. Everything's fine. Don't worry. There were some health concerns. You can listen to Nerve Rage Radio for more details, but my wife was having contractions. I was already stressed, and this figure broke. Now, as you'll see in the video, I'm still not entirely sure if I broke it or if I bought it broken and somebody did a quick little hack job on it and then I rebroke it. It doesn't matter. I thought it was still worth showing because either way, it's, it's at least entertaining to watch. You know, here we try to entertain and inform. Sometimes it's more of column A, sometimes it's more of column B. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Cherry Popper's favorite nerd, and the reason why I say that is because this was the first third-party piece I ever owned. Now, I know this is a little late uh, to the game, but, you know, apparently we got some downtime, and this was shot long before it probably airs, and uh, at least it's in 2016. You'll know that from uh, the end footage, but neither here nor there. This is Thunderstread from Fans Project. This was their take on shrapnel. He comes with a number of accessories, mainly centered around this thing here. Now, he's got these claws, and you can have them. I loved the uh, butterfly joint on this guy, by the way. It just lends itself. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, and it lends itself to so many poses. Uh, there's an awful lot that you can do with it. Mine's a little gummed up. There. Um, but you could really make an intimidating-looking bot. Doesn't matter. That's not what we're here to talk uh, at the moment. But he comes with these things. And this was frustrating to me when I got them. But they're on square pegs. So they have to go in a, a very specific kind of way. Uh, or you can use the smaller claws if you want. And they'll fit in as well, depending on what size claws you want. I always like the big, stupid size claws on mine. But doesn't matter. Then you can take this, and you can take all these, and you can peg them in to this. Easy for me to say. And he had like a throwing star. You know, you wrapped all these bits around, and he had a throwing star, but it was way too big. Or you could have a smaller throwing star, and I just broke him. It was already broke. Wow. Wow. See, I bought this off eBay, and you see the glue? Somebody sold me a broken one, and I didn't realize until now. What a bummer. What a bummer. Oh, that infuriates me. But let's not let it stand in the way of our, of our show. Look at them. Look at what they did. Low life people, man. I swear to God. Oh, oh, that upsets me. Okay, so this whole thing here comes off. This whole section, you can set that off to the side. And same with this and then this peg. And this gets down to kind of our bare essential uh, bot. And you have all these little armatures and stuff and they, they can pose any which way you want. And we'll talk about the articulation. Now, the wrists... Did this one break too? No, this one hadn't broke yet. But it looks like he glued this one into place too. Well, it's on a swivel now. Either way. The head was on a ball... Oh no, it was on a hinge. With a swivel at the bottom, which is interesting. The paint on the eyes is done red and then silver paint for the mouth. And actually it is a ball peg up top. And you get a, a good a great range of motion. I always remember that being impressive to me. Waist swivel. Uh, we have this yellow plastic and then black paint. And then these are two repro labels applied on there. Repro labels applied on there. And then for the shoulders, you got a ball peg that comes out. I just broke it. Wow, what a piece of junk. 
Maybe it wasn't broken. Maybe I just broke them. Oh well. Goes to show you. Do you know what I mean? I can tell you right now I don't recommend this. Um, this this was on a, a ball peg. came out here and it gave you a butterfly joint to there, which I did like. And then the ball peg for this. What a piece of Oh my god. I should have never done this. I should have never done these reviews. I was happy 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, black paint, no, that's glue, also, no, that's paint, black paint on the forearms, and then waist of which we already talked about, I think these are ball joints, they just don't get you very far, T-jointed ball joints for hips, get you out to there, is that stuck too? And forward and back, range was okay, thigh swivel, single joint and knee, and then ankle, not a little bit of a tilt down and nothing really up. And then the rocker was good to go. And then you had purple paint on the bottom. And I think that this yellow bit was a sticker. Yeah, that's a repper label. That's a repper label. That's a repper label on the side. So, yeah, and then red paint there on the back. And the back was, you know, it was fine. No big deal. Not as not as uh, much of a problem as uh, pieces just falling off while I'm looking at this guy. Haven't touched him in years, and look what happened. Old handless McGee himself. Let's transform him. This piece on the back came up and comes around and tabs back in. And then these pieces flipped up. For the thought, this bit, this spun around, and then... I think I had it wrong. So, like, it's supposed to be like this... So you spin it around and you move both of these to the front. There. And then that's in location. Now the feet and these things, you got to pull these out. Uh, at least that didn't break, it just fell off. Um, bring these down. Spin these around. And then they tab back in. But it's hard to get the clearance. Once you get the clearance, you're fine. They tab back in there. Same on this side. Untab this. Bring the feet out. Spin it around. Tab back in. Now, this part is the part that sucks. So, you unhinge these and you spin this around and you just try your best to get it to where uh, these legs will fold up and then encapsulate uh, the arm and I'm trying to remember the best way to do it because I know it was a pain but I think I think that's it if that if that's not it we're not gonna go with anything else because Chances are it'll break on me. All right. There we go. And then these pieces came down. You fold up the legs and they encapsulate the arm. And because it's a... Oh, I didn't go through the shoulder. We had a bicep swivel. <laughs> pieces falling off. Why did I do this? Um, and then a double hinged elbow, one's on a ball peg. Range of motion was pretty good, at least 90 degrees. And the hard part is, it's, it, all this is relatively fiddly. And this... Same right. But we're just going to go with it. You can also take this piece, if memory serves, and that's broken too. There's a little peg that goes on there, and that's broken also. But that used to go in there, and then the peg sat in that little hole there. This is when I was first getting started with third party, and I just didn't know any better. 
Um, I don't even think I had started like getting like watching reviews of anybody yet or anything else. What a bummer! This is really blowing me out. Um, fold that up, and this is supposed to sit better. I'm not sure, not sure why, but there's one piece. There's the other. And I think that was about it. I don't think those pieces tab together or anything. It was similar. And then you can, uh, these legs here tabbed in up there, like this piece is on, on a little hinge and that brought up and tabbed in. And same for the other side. Uh, all right. And then we'll put our pieces back on that fell off, namely this piece here. There. All right. So that sits like that. And then you take your claw pieces and you tab them, or you clip them rather, on to that piece there. In there. Oh, there's the piece that pegs in. You see that piece right there in the hip that pegs into that little slot in the calf. And let's just go for it because it doesn't matter if I break this thing at this point, does it? There. And that's that guy. And this was fine at the time uh, before I knew it was broken or before I broke it. And uh, the legs are all on these little pieces here. They're on ball pegs. And then if you want to unpeg this to get a little bit more, you can. There's nothing that says you have to keep that locked in there. Um... And then these pieces open up here on a hinge, and then they also hinge here. So, you know, but this is a bit fiddly. This this always irritated me even when I first got it. But, you know, I don't, I wonder, man. I wonder if that piece wasn't broken. And I don't know. Maybe it's just over time. It's gotten weak. But there he is. And, you know, he was he was big. I remember even thinking that during the time. You know, he's about the size of the MP Lambo. Um, yeah, not a little fella. So all the detailings and stuff pretty much come through, and, and the size is good, and the, the overall aesthetic was kind of cool for the time, especially for a classic shelf. You know, uh, these could have been designed better because you can get them that close, but it's hard. Like, they get caught up on something, so you got to, like, unpeg them and then repeg them back in. Let's be honest, at, at this point, uh, there's there's no way in hell I'm going to recommend this to you. Um, but regardless, you know, I think you get the point. I'm tired of messing with it. Remember how cool he looked when he first started? Doesn't matter. We'll use Generations Warpath as our size comparison before we do final thoughts. So there that is. Uh, the bad is, is that apparently it doesn't hold up over time. I don't remember having any problems with them in the past. Um, the transformation, uh, the, the part with the arms always stunk a little bit, and, and there is a lot of like fiddly bits, like there's so many moving pieces that it, it did kind of create a, a pain. I'm sorry I got distracted during this video, it's just it was a little unnerving to see two hands snap on me within the, you know, the midst of five minutes. And there's probably a lot of people that wouldn't even put this video out after that happened, but uh, I think that stuff like that is important to show. Uh, I, I suggest to anybody who currently has these guys to be extra careful um, I, I can't remember whether or not the wrist used to swivel or not, but if it didn't, definitely don't put any torque on it because I barely touched the one before it popped off. And it looks like to me they've been glued, so it's still possible that somebody that had it before me broke them and, and then that happened. But because I did buy them off eBay, uh, it was a long, long time ago. You know, I barely, in you know, 2012, 2013, somewhere around there. But yeah, it's just I'm a little bummed out by this, so I'm a little sorry to, to bring it down. On, on So it's interesting to take a, a trip down memory lane, and it's interesting to see pieces snap that you otherwise thought were sturdy in your mind's eye anyway. And I think that that's worth putting this video out. So we're going to do all the bugs. Uh, hopefully the, the rest will be better than this one in terms of how it's making me feel at the moment. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. My fellow, is this... My, my fellow Americans, we've allowed ourselves to be turned into a circus. We have a two-paid fat madman at the helm.
we have a woman on the opposite side who is the living embodiment of a pair of flip-flops. They've allowed us to become a mockery for the rest of the free world. I see it left and right every day. Every day when I look out into the faces of children and young aspiring adults who really want to push themselves forward and become motivated collectors, that they don't know who to choose. They feel like they're going to lose. Collectors, as you well know, are necessarily the most motivated people, unless, of course, it's to fill their collection. How do we intend on getting these people off of the couch and into the voting booth? I'm not so sure. There was a time when the red, white, and blue it meant something to me. There was a time when my presidents were young, there was a time when I felt as though they were honest. There was a time when they drew a line in the sand and had the courage of their convictions in terms of what they stood for. What issues are we fighting over now? Has anyone bothered to bring up the hollowness and a Hasbro Deluxe? Has anyone bothered to delegate why Chinese New Year has to last two months while collectors are starving stateside waiting for that next third party piece to come in? No. No, they haven't. And you need a voice. Ladies and gentlemen of the United States of America, I'd like to announce that I'm running for presidency of 2016 of the greater United States.